Greetings, my most excellent friends. This is Mike. And Katie. And we're on episode 94. What are we talking about? Today is Bill and Ted Face the Music. And more. On this episode of Cup of Rad. Hey, everybody. We're back at it another week. It's the end of summer. Oh my gosh. It, like, summer is like... Fall is almost here. Like weather wise, it just turned into fall. Yeah. Trees are already starting to lose leaves and didn't help that we had rain today. Yeah. Came right. out of nowhere, right? I'm like, I'm still holding on. I'm like, shorts and a tank top is happening. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I really hope we still have some summer weather for this upcoming week because camping could use some summer weather. Into the unknown. <laughs> No, we're not going anywhere into the unknown. We're just going to the local campground. Yeah. So it won't be too into the unknown. But I would like the time I actually get to go camping to not be rain. Alone in the woods. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. It will, The weather changes so fast that I doubt... You could check it twice a day and get different forecasts. Yeah. It's been, and, you know, yeah, it's just like... But now it's getting, like, so close that... And now you're worrying. <laughs> No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I mean, we're going anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's just what it is. Rain or shine, we're in the woods. <laughs> so Mike might be camping by himself again. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, uh, well, um, we're here. How are you doing? That's great. We'd love to hear you. We'd love to listen. No, I don't even know what I'm saying. We'd love to be in those <laughs> lovely ear holes. <laughs> we love something. Yeah, we love something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, the other week, I want to give everyone a thanks and all that for downloading our episode. Uh, we uh, had probably one of the best months since yeah. we started, uh, which was really fantastic to see. So thank you to all those old and new that are sticking with us or finding us for the first time. Um, it's pretty awesome to have you here. Hopefully we fill your cup with some radness um, of pop culture goodness. Yes, thank you, everyone. Yeah, so this episode here is different. It's been a different one for a long time. Uh, it's a new movie. I know. I, I quite, I don't quite know what to do with this. Like we actually watch something new and talk about it. Like I, I have that like spoiler concern now. Right. This is a new weird thing. Right. It's, it is weird. But I mean, we had to just jump on, on something new. Like something, especially. Well, something especially so what excellent. it was, right? Like, Very nice. I try. Very I nice. Try. Very nice. <laughs> so, so what came out this weekend? Bill and Ted face the music. That's right. Bill and Ted are back. It's like been 35 years since this whole thing started. Yeah. Um, and 20 something since the last one. So uh, Bill and Ted hit on demand and some theaters, depending on where you're at. Yeah. Um, we took the on demand route just because it was easier for us. Yeah. And most likely that we were going to watch it, um, you know, because... Our theaters are have opened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we could go to our local theater. But of course, as we'd said before, you know, it's showing as groups of two. Yeah. So we'd have one person sitting on their lonesome. And uh, you know what? I'm all by out of yourself out of practice. Going alone to the in a dark theater. Wow. He's like full of music this time. It's because well, we're facing the music. We're facing though. the music. Yeah, <laughs> that's we're what you're doing. Facing right? the weird music, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it's all original. Can't yeah. get can't get copyright blocked because it's all original oh, music. Oh yeah, kind and Mike of. just starts rambling about things you can't copyright infringement <laughs> <laughs> to a melody. Nice. So uh, face music. Me. Yeah. So uh, Bill and Ted face music. The whole story is the idea that Bill and Ted still have not created the song that will unite the world. Yep. Yeah. And they've gone through everything possible, and they're they went all the way up to rocket fandom or stardom, and have all the way hit rock bottom pretty much yep. now. They're playing just in like dive bars in Barstow, California. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so they get the the news, and they they they're still married to the princesses, and they have daughters. Yeah, that they've conveniently named after Themselves. each other's. <laughs> They're, yeah, the daughters are just super mini me's, which was which was hilarious. But named opposite. Yep, I know, right? Yeah, Theodora so. and uh, Billy. Yep, yep. So, uh, and then uh, they find out that there was more to the prophecy. The prophecy is that it will their music will help you reunite and um, make 
all the realities well yeah together, they have to unite otherwise... the world and then also save reality because yeah. if they don't play at this certain time they find out the exact time, time location and place. they're gonna do it and if they don't make that happen everything ceases to exist yeah i love that they're like wow uh that changes things right it's a pretty big burden there people like damn uh <laughs> you like that would can you imagine though like You've already had the pressure hitting you all your life, and you keep thinking that you've write, written that song that's going to unite the world, and it doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be. And then someone comes up, and I was like, yeah, so... BTW. You, you done messed up. You haven't done the song. And if you don't write the song, the fabric of time, space, and reality, and alternate realities are just going to come crashing down, right. and everything will cease to exist. No big deal. It's just literally that. Well, because it, it starts breaking down already because factions of history, people Popping start up. going all in different places, right? George Washington pops in different places. Um, you know, you have all these these different figures popping around history. Yeah, right? Babe so. Ruth, and they show different things like that. And monks suddenly show up places. And yep. So, um, so what did you think? What did you think of it? Well, my quick recap. I loved it. Yeah. Um. I I didn't quite know what to expect from it. I was going into it totally open, just being like, you know what, this is going to be fun. And it was super fun. And I actually enjoyed it even like it was even more like deep to my core enjoyable than I thought it would be. So nice. Um, it, it touched my my soul, man. Well, well, well you were crying. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so you know what? I don't care. I'm not embarrassed. I was at first I was like, what the hell? is happening i'm crying at a bill and ted movie uh, but it's yes, the music the rhythm I, got I, you i the rhythm got to me thank you um <laughs> it did um it yeah was in so, the air tonight <laughs> copyright infringement man no <laughs> um no i um i did actually got very emotional and teared up and was crying at the end because um were you dancing uh, in the dark <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry no i'm done oh. You're being mean. You're taking away my moment of talking. I was trying to talk and be like soulful, but you know what? No. no let, so what did you think about let's it? Let's rewind. No, we're done. What did you think about it? I really enjoyed it. I got a kick out of it. It was really nice and fun. Um, it was nice to have an uplifting, goofy movie that even though it was had a meaning and message, it still was just kind of heartwarming and, mm -hmm. and just fun and warm. So I apologize. I was just coming up with trying to think of different titles that would, would have matched in the moment. So go back to your moment. Well, no, I just, I, it was just really emotional for me of the message that it turned into with, with everyone. So, um, I, I think it was, I think it was very poignant for the time or that we live in right now too, of, of coming together and accepting everything and music in general, though, is something that means so much to me and the idea of of accepting everything and, and healing emotional power through music I, is just awesome so it, i really enjoyed it so no it was a very fantastic um moment at the end of the movie with all that yeah and it was just nice to see right like the idea of just everything coming together yeah you know so i was afraid at first because with their their daughters in there i was like okay so is it gonna be like super torch movie where we're not really going to see bill and ted in it at all and it's going to be just just up to them right yeah. because with them being little mini me's yeah you know it easily could have been really just that and it it was still a, a torch movie of possibility mm -hmm. but not like yeah. it wasn't like it was centered around them it was it was their story helped move along the bill and ted story as yeah. well right so i think it was really well crafted that it brought in something new to kind of relive the magic of the first one without trampling all over and taking them away. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and it dealt with the fact that it acknowledged that they're in a different place in life and they have different things to think about and, and handle and, and worry about. And I think it, it aged well with the fans then I would assume with mm. uh, the original one that, you know, you have family now you have, uh, maybe a spouse to deal with, you know, have all these different things that you're going to think about differently and then still having to balance the idea of the world, but thinking differently about maybe what is important in life yeah. and will kind of lead you to that right path. Yeah. You know, one thing I liked about the kids was that, you know, they were supposed to be like 20 in their twenties even mm -hmm. said that they were like, you know, you, 
But I like the fact that they actually loved and cared for their dads. Yeah. They didn't think they were idiots. They didn't. It, right. right. It wasn't. They weren't embarrassed by it. You're right. That's not something you normally see anymore. Yeah. It's normally like, oh, my God, my parents are horrible and they're awful and they're always just a bane to their mm-hmm. lives. And then they were just kept. They were always just like, you know, you can do it, dads. You're going to write the greatest song ever. And you're they were super. It was a super welcome. Positive and, and. Well, when they were in trouble, I love that they didn't even question it. They're like, what can we do to help? Yeah, we're going to do this. And it's like that. I think that it without realizing it, you're like, wow, that was like. A really awesome moment. Right. Because that's okay. Yeah. They they didn't think it was less cool and they easily could have been those people that were like that. Yeah, they, right? they literally could have been the, the snobby kids and you know mm-hmm. and that's what it would have usually been in almost every other movie. But this here they were they were it was like they it showed how good Bill and Ted, as much as maybe they didn't amount to anything and they were still considered slackers, they still were good dads. Well, yeah, I'd, right. And yeah, they exactly. created the they created these two kids that had appreciation and kindness mm-hmm. to others and well, uh, respect. So, how much of spoilers are we going to go into? Mm. Just go for it. Um, I like that there was still history in this, mm-hmm. and it was music history then, uh, because and it showed with them again. They they go back in time and they start creating a band for their dads. Yeah, and I love that they went and found, you know historical musicians but normally when we think about like the greatest musicians of all time we really think in the last 60 years let's say we just go back to that more of a more current music because that's all we can really think about but for them it was farther back than just current music of, of thinking about a different band it was it was musicians in the sense of putting together sound and rhythm and doing something different for creating something, yeah. you know, and, and well, then they found people that had inspired people. That yeah. They, so, you know, you know, it, for them, okay. The, the first one they went back to was Hendrix easily. Anyone now could say, yeah, he was one of the greatest music, musicians and he inspired so many people that are, are around today. But then what inspired Jimi Hendrix and what inspired, you know, back forth. Yeah. And, you know, we always, we think about classical music, um, and so they went and found Mozart, which was just hilarious because Jimi Hendrix and Mozart were like hitting it off. Yeah. And Kiddo yeah. was super impressed with the fact that they had like a riff off, basically. Yeah. And and I love that they showed, say, Jimi Hendrix being so impressed with Mozart mm-hmm. because he wasn't just like, well, it's just my style of music. That's all that matters. Yeah. And just the, that simple concept that, you know this is a different place in time, a different style of music, a different instrument, but they still were an amazing ability and they still did something. Um, and to show that they have that appreciation rather than, well, it's not guitar and it's not this rock and it's just, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't exist, you know? And then they went even farther back. They went like, it was, it was at first I was like, what the hell are they going? They're like way far back in like ancient times. They, yeah. they found an ancient Chinese flutist and then like all the way back to percussion, yeah. like ancient, like uh, cavemen, yeah. you know? So it was a little ridiculous, but at the same time, it's the, the idea behind it that it's, Music has been forever. Music transcends. Yeah, that was our earliest form of communication is making noise. Yeah. You know, we, rhythm and beat. It is in every single culture, no matter what style it is. And it can it can break those language barriers, too. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, they go get, they go to China. Of course, this lady is. I would freak out if all of a sudden these strange people were here. And but he Mozart plays the flute and all of a sudden it's like, OK, yeah, we're cool. Yeah. You know, um, so music is a way to communicate. Yeah. And I thought that was just so awesome. Yeah. Like they, they had the they had those moments that was very reminiscent of the first film mm-hmm. with that style. Right. Like yeah. You could see that. Uh, which I thought was really But I like cool. it, yeah. It was, it was it was using that original magic, but in a different sense, mm-hmm. right? Well, you can tell that they, they did blend both the two movies together because they had, they had the original, like, collecting historical figures to solve a problem. Mm-hmm. And then they had kind of that quirky, weird, what's going on with death side. And it, it is, it's just, you know, time paradox. and I love that death was still in this. <laughs> And it was still the same guy, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, uh, it was funny. Yeah, they still end up in hell. <laughs> right. 
They still, they still go to hell. Right. Everyone seemed really nice there, though. <laughs> right. They're all even like, the demons yeah. were like, "Oh yeah, they're over here." Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Before they even knew they were. But like death. everything is pretty positive. Almost yeah. every interaction they have, like they they created such an uplifting, just silly, just like. I love that his dad never believed him. Of course, mm-hmm. and always thought he was crazy. And then by the end, it was like, "Yep, you were." This is happening, so apparently everything else you said was actually happening. I'm totally sorry. How can I help? I was like, damn, dude. Like, you really uh, came back around real quick there. Right. I was wrong. Right. <laughs> so. And that was still... Hey, that was, but it, like, there was a bit of a time paradox with that one. Yeah. Because that was Future Dad. Yeah, I don't... So they made a... There was a plot was holder. Future Dad? Yes, because that's, that's when they You're went... You're right. It was yes. from the future. Oh, you're right. It was 2025. It was five years in the future. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They they totally missed that that moment. That's funny. Yeah, because they're cha- that Bill and Ted are trying to go into the future and find their future selves to steal with, the song. Steal the song, right? And they keep finding themselves who are complete like dirt failures bags. and dirtbags in life, and they're trying to sabotage them and try to make sure they change their lives, right? Because they find out that they're. They go to couples counseling, which is, I think is hilarious because their wives bring them there. Couples, for a couple of couples. Place. Well, because they, they don't realize yeah. it, but the couples, they show up at the same time and they show up together. And I love the look on the counselor's face. It was like, this is just so weird. But they refer to each other as one collective unit. Yeah. It's we love you over yeah. and over again. And it's just like, oh, damn, this is just painful to watch. <laughs> you feel so bad for their wives, right? Um and I love that that comes around at the end and they figure it out, you know, and they they still are totally together as best friends. But yeah. they realize that they can actually have those individual awakenings there. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, they keep fighting in the future for things and things keep getting worse. Yeah. They keep finding themselves and they, they, they just until they get so far in the future that they're that they're yeah, on they're deathbeds. deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're literally just like, Yeah. They just keep trying to sabotage and they're just and we learned about, you know, if if they suddenly gain an accent, there's something shifty about Something's you. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, they show up and they're just dressed absolutely just totally bizarre. Mm-hmm. Like and they have accents and they just look like completely different people and yep. it's like something is wrong. Like, like it's like a and they were posing. Seventies like it was like weird, like Aerosmith Steven Tyler thing going on, like Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> and I don't know what. It was just insane. So, but, um, but you know, all in all, it was a really fun movie. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, it might change your life, but it's, it's, you not, know what? But it was, it was a nice message for right now. Yeah. Though, oh, right? yeah. Totally. And I think that was great because, you know, like, we're, of course, I'm not going to say the exact ending for things, but obviously the collecting of the historical figures, you know, when they do actually f- play together, you know, they, they work together and they all bring something to it in their individual style that creates something beautiful Mm -hmm. and you would never expect it to happen. And so I think that's the, the awesomeness of, it's not a perfect song. It's not a perfect style of music. It's a collaboration and a collectiveness. And that was a, that's one of the things that I said at the end yeah. about it wasn't the music. It was the coming together. Yeah. Right. right? So um, so it was really fun how it worked together to find that way to the end there. Yeah. Right. So. I totally recommend it. I think it's it's worth your time. Yeah. You know, even if you get it on demand. Uh, we it, I, One thing I thought was pretty good was it was only 19 bucks. Yeah. For a family of three, it was way cheaper than going to the theater. So that was one of the what that also sold us. We could watch it the time we wanted. And have and pizza while we watched it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how much more excellent yeah. couldn't have been? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that was that was, you know, I, it I it's weird to think that Bill and Ted is probably one of the few trilogies that actually is pretty satisfying <laughs> for all little... three films. All right. Like yeah. you think about it, like I, you know, I. It's not like oh, there was that that black stain right? on it or something. Because like like even Bogus Journey, as weird as it is, it's avant gardeish yeah. for what it is. It's strange and it's just it's silly and ridiculous and like, you know, it still was a, it still felt like an I- independent film almost, mm-hmm. right? Um, in in its retrospect, like it's like it's it's almost like this weird outside of time, like Hollywood hasn't been able to taint that almost the purity that is bill and ted yeah still was there in bogus and in 
face the music. Because we just need to be excellent to one another. And party on, dudes. <laughs> I love that they stand there and hold their heart and put their arm up. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just excellent. Right? So, no, I, I totally recommend it. I, I do hope that when it comes out, they bring out the Blu-ray of all three. That's what yeah, I'm going to get, the, cool. the collection. Because I think that'd be a fun thing to have to watch yeah. over and over again. Because I... Yeah, well, it, just, I, it made me really happy. Like, I remember yeah. we were like, what are we going to f- watch to follow up this? Because we were so we happy, were just so happy. Like, it was just a really nice, uplifting thing. And that it's a very foreign feeling for this year, honestly. Right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, this is good. Like, I feel, I don't want to watch anything that's going to bring me down. Right. <laughs> like, I was I was happy after. Yeah. You know, and that that was a good thing. So definitely go check out Bill and Ted Face Music. Highly recommended. So we uh, we decided to dive into Netflix and uh, there was a movie on there that uh, we kept looking at. And because of our enjoyment of community, uh, we had started finding things. With... What are the movies that the people in? Yeah, right. That's what's led us to Glow and yeah. uh, Horse Girl and um, even well, we had seen Atlanta before community. Yeah. Um, but uh, we finally found one with uh, Danny Pudi. Yeah. And uh, the Tiger Hunter. Yes. The uh, Tiger Hunter is what it was called. Uh, And it has nothing to do with tiger hunting. No. (laughs) It was a passing by. His father was a tiger hunter Mm -hmm. uh, in India. And when he was a small boy, there was the movie set in 79. Yeah. And he so it starts off with him in his home village and growing up and kind of what he's gone through. And it was uh, he's he's um, was able to get his engineering degree over there. And the whole point that he wanted to go to America to um, to kind of take his claim and and take his claim and then be a, uh, you know, make his father proud with Mm -hmm. his place in the world. So he gets gets accepted and moves over to America on the promise of a job in mm-hmm. this engineering firm and he gets by the time he gets over there they aren't hiring anymore yep so he of course has 30 days or his visa expires and he has to find permanent employment and he gets a temporary job as a draftsman at the same company and it's the mad the rush high shing, high jinks and all that yeah that happen uh because he's living in a house with 13 other people that are all in the same situation, basically. They all are, like, engineers or yeah, high degrees. Yeah, they all degrees. have technical degrees. Yeah, but they're working as busboys and taxi drivers and all Ballets. these things. Or not working at all. And yeah. they're trying to find, you know, the one guy's like, I'm a gigolo. <laughs> you know, and so they, they, they're they they're trying to, you know, just you just survive. Yeah, so it was an interesting commentary as well mm-hmm. on, on how much that would have happened. And probably does still happen, actually, yeah. now, you know. Um, you they have all this education and this knowledge that they would have had. And, and sadly it's not recognized when they come over, over here. Yeah. And, and it's just such a waste mm-hmm. um, because then they have to start so much at the bottom and, and, scr- you know, and scraping along. It. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it was, it was f- impressive to see that situation and for him to kind of fight his way up and to prove you just need that moment to break, to show someone what you're capable of yeah. doing. And well, he forces his way, like, yeah, because he basically because he tries to do it like nicely. Well, he makes friends with this other guy that's attempted. Yeah, to John Hurd um, of Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, and he's given him like tips on how he could possibly try, you know, kind how of to the be lay of the land. I want to be a professional American. Yeah. And he's talking to him about schmoozing, basically, you know, yeah. learning about baseball and learning about all sorts and how to talk to people and ways to get into the room. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, they, they, the other engineers just think he's a taco guy and they yeah. think he's funny and. He starts trying to give them to fix because they're trying to they're trying to figure out how to make a microwave. Yeah. So they have microwaves, but they didn't have ones that actually could cook frozen food yeah. without making it explode. So they're solving a problem with that because, of course, you can't make the TV dinner feel without uh, mm-hmm. dealing with that. Uh, and it was. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. We don't think about like everything that would have gone into making that perfect right. settings for a microwave. We take those for granted so much. Yeah, right. Because you've had it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he's got a girl back home and her father's trying to find a suitor and he wants her to marry an American, right? So they're doing an American tour yes. of sorts. So it's like hint hint of romantic comedy, but also coming of age yeah. and understanding. Finding a place um, in your world and, and uh, you know, reconciling what you want to see in your life and your parents' expectations and everything like that. Right? Yeah. Because so. yeah, it's the idea that, that he had always thought, you know, he his father died when he was eight and he had all these mythical rememberings of how fantastic his 
you know, his father was. So every all the scenes with his father, he's got the like the the perfect mustache and like the the suit where he's, he's out always hunting. just standing there, like the sun shining on yeah, him. Yeah, like, I'm marvelous. And, yeah, right? and he sees everyone and everyone starts dancing and singing and like it's all just like you know. It seemed too mythical. perfect when you watch yeah. it. and You're like something is wrong. This seems like a, a definitely is it glamour- eight year old boy's version. Yeah, of his it's, dad, it's a right? glamorized version yeah. of it for sure. So and it's just it's just it, you know it was another one of those uplifting movies. Yeah, it was, because it was it was a good story. Mm-hmm. It's very independent, so mm-hmm. it's not super polished. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just a, a good movie. Well, like the people that he that he lives with, all those guys were such really good guys, and he yeah. he learns to stop. You know, thinking that he has to survive all by himself mm-hmm. to learning that other people can help, and as a team they succeed and looking out for each other. And they all kind of get a piece of the pie of what they yeah. want, you know, and, and he does things Start to help finding out all their people. strengths as well to yeah. help them get out of where they are at. Right. Yeah. Again, you know, if, and with all of them having their technical degrees, mm-hmm. they all have a bit of their knowledge that they can bring to it. And it's a, such a collaborative effort again. Right. And uh, yeah, it was really positive to yeah, see. Really and nice. I like that it didn't um, because it wasn't just a romantic movie that it had a sense of it's everything's going to be OK but it left it open to you didn't quite know because that wasn't the purpose of the story. The purpose no. of the story was for him to come around with come his around with father. Yeah. His idea that is where he is. And what life, he wanted right? to be for his father. What he felt he needed to do to be, um, impressive to his. Yeah. 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 So, so I was, yeah, he it, really good acting, honestly, mm-hmm. from all everyone just did a really good job. It was funny. Like it was very humorous. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was just, yeah, humorous and uplifting and it just... Good banter. Yeah. Silly situations that weren't like corny and ridiculous, mm-hmm. you know. It was yeah, it was really well done. So it came out in 2016. Um, the guy that plays uh, in Community, plays Abed's father, was actually the father in the Tagger Hunter of the girl that he's trying... Sammy... The guy yeah, the general... Uh, yeah, yeah, he's trying to... He's trying to the, so I thought that the was... The girl he me. loves, yeah. right? Yeah. It all comes around. It's all connected. It's all connected, man. It's just a dream Community, of Abed. Right? It's just one of one of Abed's uh, you know, alternate realities. Right. <laughs> Maybe it's an Abed movie. Ooh. And his dad was in it. Maybe. And he would have put him in that role because yeah. he didn't have the greatest relationship with his dad. He would have been the person that's trying to ruin his life, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, that's what we've decided. Yeah. There we go. It's that's what we've tried to figure out with all the movies, everything we've seen that everyone else is in. Yeah. Right? Because we figured, you know, Annie just went off and became a wrestler with Glow. Mm-hmm. Right? And, you know, yeah. Troy went to space. <laughs> he became a space pirate. <laughs> Well, uh, that was after he got lost in the ocean and washed up in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> washed up in Atlanta. I said like he went to space first and, and then, then washed up in Atlanta. Up. Okay. Right? Because it was just like, sense. you know. Much more hardened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Much more like, wow. You know, I, I was doing Space all this was hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't think we could add that in there. Uh, <laughs> so... So that was another good movie we watched. Yeah, I was I was thoroughly impressed. Like, you so know, it's on Netflix at least up here in Canada. Honestly, uh, so who knows where it's at? Everywhere so else. good luck finding it. But look, but <laughs> <laughs> international should be fine. Yeah, the Tiger Hunter. Um, it, it was a pretty pretty good movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so then uh, we following night. Oh gosh, what another movie? Yeah, I have uh, now in rather rapid succession um have all three of my sailor moon movies yeah so we got to watch three weeks of sailor moon yo i know right sailor moon super s yeah because you know they're very creative with i'm their waiting titles. for it to be sailor moon xyz <laughs> that would be funny sailor uh, moon ultra super mega xyz nice i like it i like it okay uh, I want Sailor Moon <laughs> Crisis or something like that. Like that, mm-hmm. they should have just been doing like those types of. That would have made more sense for it to be like Crystal and Crisis and I can't remember the last one, Cosmic. Uh, those ones that would have actually at least more made more sense, right? But yeah, yeah regardless, but this is about fairies. It's about fairies. So this one is uh, all the children are being stolen uh, because this little like Pied Piper fairy thing shows up and they all start singing a song about this fairy and all this food and sweet treats. It's like a little weird, you know, hands on. Jiggly pudding. 
<laughs> scary thing, just leading the children off to go eat sweet treats, and they get on this giant boat to and get taken off on this like blimp in the sky um, with this little Pied Piper thing, and uh, and uh, so then you find. Yeah, it's all about they they, they start with this them one baking. happens fast. Yeah, this one started with them. So they're all baking and they're making treats and everything, and they're talking and then they start talking about the three p.m. fairy sugar, sugar fairy. Is it or just three no, p.m. 3 fairy? fairy? I think it was. Um, and uh, the idea, which was funny, because we always have snack at three o'clock, right? So we had this like, whoa, moment. is there actually a maybe 3 there is p.m. A fairy? How many of you also have snack at three p.m. Right. It's like it's like three p.m. And she's like, "Damn, I need." Some I don't know. Snacks. Was that was that part of us though for school? I mean, I, we I'd always come home after school and have snack. Like, why three o'clock? I don't know. It's got to be based on. The I just usually get hungry, and appears we usually be around. It's three. around. Well, we eat around every three hours, almost. I guess so that's why. Um, but anyway, so three o'clock fairy um, and. Uh, Sailor Jupiter is is talking that she always used to think that it was the cuckoo bird in the clock because her mom used to always say that around three o'clock, whenever her mom made her cakes, it was always the three o'clock. Like it was like this weird urge to have to create baked goods at three o'clock, which I believe is an okay thing to implement, Mike, just so you know, looking at you. (laughs) (laughs) Just get on that treats, yeah. (laughs) And uh, so, yeah, they're all all baking everything. Well, uh, Chibiusa finds this you know, she sees, you can tell she sees like these rainbow iridescent wings off of this person standing outside the sweet shop. And, uh, it's one of the fairies and, uh, but she doesn't know that of course. And she starts, uh, making friends with, with him. And, uh, I, know, was it, dude? I didn't either. They're very androgynous, honestly. Uh, it's, it wasn't clear at all because the voice you couldn't even tell, like there was nothing really. And, and the, his name was Pearl. It's also not helping anything at all. So, um, so the fairy, uh, we only find out to later where it's, they start referring to it as a him. Um, well, they mentioned it as a boyfriend, a boyfriend. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, she, she makes friends with him by giving him some cookies and it's just kind of like the, he looks so sad because he wants to like protect all the sweet treats idea and the kids and everything. And he looks so forlorn when you find out that he's the brother of this fairy that has been stealing all these children. Yeah. And apparently it's what happening all over the world. And they're just now finding out that children in swarms have gone missing. Like that like, took way too, like, I'm sorry, that'd be like a one night thing immediately. Like something is wrong. This whole, <laughs> child, this whole village has no more children in it. Hundreds Not like, Oh, by the way, this has happened in 27 countries and you know children are missing what the hell <laughs> like uh so they're all being uh carted off to uh their sweet dreams basically as they sleep uh, are being f- feeding this mystical evil witch's black hole dream black dream hole i think it was yeah yeah, yeah. and she's trying to take over she yeah. looked like a vampire yeah she had pointy teeth and she had like bat idea like yeah, she looked like a vampire. So like it was, like, was full on was vampire. Like, that that moment of like, was the English translation off? Like, because <laughs> right? she but literally looked like well, a vampire. And, and because she's putting the children in little cough, sleep coffins. Yeah, they call them sleep, sleep coffins. Co- I told kiddo, we're gonna, we need to remind, we need to tell him, time to go to your sleep coffin, and he was not impressed with that. <laughs> I think it's funny, but they were like little crystal like. I'm gonna tell you, hey, hey, let's go to the sleep coffin. Sleep coffin. How's how you um, feel? I'm there. Sleep coffin time. <laughs> uh, so she's gaining in power by, of course, sucking their energy and making it so. Their sugar energy. Their sugar energy. Apparently, children are full of sugar, you know, um, and spice and everything nice, right? I mean, that's what we're taught as children. Then why they only take why they take boys in? Because we're supposed to be filled with slime and snails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> why puppy dog tails? <laughs> Who knows? It's <laughs> random, right? It's so disturbing. Like, why do we just have why? dog tails inside of us? Is that a phallic reference? <laughs> Think of it: slime, snails, and oh. puppy dog tails. It's all about the penis. Mind blown! Oh my goodness. That's even like even worse. I mean, just the idea of the puppy dog tails. I mean, yeah, like what? What? Why? What? Why? Because why? That's just creepy. They, if there's, there's like, ew, it's gross, and then like that's horrific, <laughs> like horrific. 
It's not like we chose to have puppy dog tails in us. The rhyme just tells us we have them in us. So wow, now I would just want to look up the like history behind this horrible. Are we like wagging? It was always because we're like uh, fidgeting. We want to no. get away from our spot. We're like, yeah, no. it's free. I, I think it is a phallic reference. Yeah. Anyways, but then it's like we're always helicoptering. Really <laughs> Maybe you are. <laughs> anyway, Sailor oh, Moon goodness. Super S. Um. So then, the, of the course, black. So then the uh, the sailors catch uh, Chibiusa gets gets um you know in this scary trance and is being taken away in one of these ships. So then they end up on this planet trying they, to they save. They break her trance by spanking her. They do. They beat her around a little bit uh, to wake her up. And and... Spanking her. <laughs> it's her mom who does it, so it's okay. <laughs> her mom from the past. Yeah. You know what? It's that whole storyline, even when I was reading the manga, was just like, this is weird. <laughs> like, because they're just totally accepting of, oh, by the way, I'm back in the past here learning from you guys, and it's all right. And I'm going to act like I'm just one of you guys, but you're really my future mom. And it's just like, what? the hell <laughs> um and then of course in the midst of all this Usagi's also super jealous like she is in the manga Chibiusa and Momo and uh, it's just so funny to see this whole weird thing going on with it but uh, so they gotta save Chibiusa and uh, they're trying to help and, and and get rid of the dark the fairies and the witch and all this sort of stuff and these creepy bonbon babies little bug baby bubble babies yeah baby bubble bubble there's little like candy things that the, they, they shoot out at them and then they turn into like weird jelly you know floating monsters things imagine like um um uh, willy wonka the blueberry blueberry chick. yeah but yeah, there's just like weird cartoony versions of that floating down in the sky and yeah. they hit them. And so they, they do a decent job of originally taking them down and then they just are being swarmed by it. But I love the legendary show up. Pluto, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Pluto, <laughs> one one round and she takes them all out. It's like, yes, she's super awesome. Uh, you liked uh, Neptune when she showed up and was talking uh there when uh, she was you know they were she was complaining about the fact that the queen wanted to keep all the children as children so that they never grow up and uh she was like <laughs> she was like yeah but then we never get to grow up and enjoy life's pleasures and then looks over at uranus as a little the wink yeah life's enjoy. pleasures yeah right <laughs> so like, like, oh my goodness. <laughs> we know what's up <laughs> Yeah, we know what pretty. pleasures are going down. Right? Like the way it was delivered and, mm -hmm. and animated and everything. It's oh, like, oh, yeah. you know exactly what she's talking about. It's not like they can all get to join, you know, grow up. Yay. You know, yeah, it's, it's a like, lot. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's the booty call. It is the booty call. So, uh, but uh, long story short, as usual, Sailor Moon has to nearly kill herself to uh, solve everything and lend, get her strength all lended from the sailors. And uh, she perseveres and blinds them and gets to save the day and they magically teleport all the children home <laughs> it happens so fast it goes from like super drawn out to this is horrible and look at her go and she's trying really hard and she's you know like i wasn't really even like and then I all of a sudden it's like oh everything's gone fixed yeah, like I wasn't even like answering any emails or like yeah. anything. Like I was all off my phone the entire time. Yeah. I even got a little lost. I was like, how did this happen so fast? <laughs> I know, right? I was like, it's all so of a sudden funny. it was over and I'm still just laying there like, what? Right? Uh, so yeah, so that is just, it, it wraps up nice and tidy really quickly, which was really funny. But uh, yeah, so then uh, that was it. <laughs> uh, out of the three of them, it was my least favorite, I think, only because it was so centered on on Chibi Usa herself, and nothing's wrong with her character. But I just I like I like seeing more of the Guardians themselves together. Uh, it's it was fun to see. I like being able to see the legendary ones in them, though. Um, that has been enjoyable. But I definitely like the first one the most yeah. with them, only because I like the villain a little bit more. I think it was a little bit more of an, a, a better story with that. Yeah. Um, but I'm still, with that being said, I still really enjoyed it because it's just weirdness for it, right? Oh, yeah. uh, the second one was awesome because it had the weird music in it. This one had some some fun sounds too, but... Uh, no, the second one had like just... Crazy out. Crazy music. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, 
sounds good. Our stuff. son loves them, I think, just because the music in them. He dances. He dances. They're like it's like seventies music in it, and yeah. it's just like he's all like, yeah. He I'm really grooving. gets into these. Like he was hysterical on some of this stuff. Yeah. And he really does love this style of storytelling. Yeah. And uh, it's it's quite adorable to watch. Just hopefully so. that he's not going to suddenly think that he just can grab something as his mystical like it's gonna solve the day problem and yeah. throw it or something. Some of their some of their their power moves, I guess, they're just really funny too to watch and like Well the they're beautifully is, animated. Oh yeah, they look great. That that has I think is the best part of seeing animated. And that's what some of the best thing about some of the animes is to see um power ups like you read the manga and all that and you, like you get you almost you don't get, get a, a sense of it right yeah, yeah but you get a better sense the story yeah almost more because they're not as drawn out they're more straight to the point right mm-hmm. they're faster but the the anime you, you get to see the power ups and the power ups are what are amazing that's one of the things i like about watching demon slayer mm-hmm. is just seeing like the water and the fire well like breath, in right? in this movie at one point chibiusa was she was taken over and, and she was being like all crushed to death and by this, the, the witch and her costume was like, she was depowering basically. And it was, it turned from her full costume to just like the ribbons that show up when she first powers up. And it was just hanging off of her the swirling and, ribbon. and having just that. And it was a lot more poignant to kind of show her almost lifeless state that she was in with yeah. this just hanging there. Um, and it, it was a lot more, more magnified than it would have just been on paper right. right so so yeah so uh it was sailor moon trilogy you know in a nutshell right? it's been pretty fun to see that yeah so. so now we can go back to watching the actual tv show okay it's gonna be really, i mean we're going back to subtitles yeah it's been hard i've been enjoying it's been fun hearing their names too you know you kind of hope that you're saying some of them right in your head too and and trying to get some of that done and um you know, you have the, the different voices that they give to them are interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, you have these characters built in your head and, and everything. So. Yeah. But yeah. So we tried to go on a toy hunt. We're going to switch gears here for a moment. We tried to go on a toy hunt. Uh, we bombed up both of our Walmarts. Mm-hmm. There are, we've not been able to find the He-Man toys, which was really sad. So I have a battle cat that everyone's just going to ride, apparently. Um, <laughs> He-Man is not riding it. Tiny He-Man is writing it. Okay, I got the Eternium minis, and now Katie's put the the tiny He-Man on it, and it looks ridiculous. One of them ate the wrong side of the mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going with, right? You gotta improvise, man. <laughs> or 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 Battle Cat's just on roids. So <laughs> Cringer finally was fed up of being a pussy. So yeah, yeah. I'll show you, He-Man. I can be stronger than you. Right? Stronger <laughs> than before. <laughs> Does he have the Zeo crystal? <laughs> um, but yeah, we struck out there. Um, we got to get a trade ready for toy for toy traders because they had a couple of the Joes, and I was like longingly. I have Lego. That we're gonna work on trading here. Yeah, so. because Lego that apparently I have not realized I haven't opened since we moved three years ago. Yeah, I was like, wow, this still has the original wrapping from moving. Maybe it's not as important as I thought. <laughs> But uh, some of those G.I. Joes are pretty cool, and there's other things, too. I'm still waiting for my Super 7. Luckily, they're talking about Super 7's shipping. Yeah, you got some good updates, finally. Thundercats are shipping, so October. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're one step closer, man. Yeah. They're Uh, in the country. He had had, had done a a video, Brian Flynn did a video, and it was about, um, there was some errors on the Thundercats. Uh, Panthro, his underwear is the wrong color blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Jackal Man, the scruff isn't painted and his guns aren't painted, but they've decided that they're going to ship them out anyways instead of making us wait longer because they were originally supposed to come out in May. You know? Wow. Uh, so they're going to do that and then they're going to then you're going to be able to have a way to contact them and no matter where you've bought them from you'll be able to get the replacement parts with the instructions on how to replace them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And with that, though, which is really cool, is that they're going to include a new Panthero head as well. Granted, those probably won't get to people until Christmas or the new year. Yeah. But still, to have a company say, there was a mistake, we will fix it. And it, you know, you know, some companies... 
you if you it's only if you buy from them that they'll fix it but they they're saying if you buy from third party we don't care there'll be a form and there'll be a number and you'll be able to get your parts yeah and it's really impressive and it makes me want to support them more so well, and it's i nice need that Raphael. if anyone <laughs> wait wait no not uh I wave like one that- tmnt come on super seven send them our way i like that they're not making every you're not having to wait for your whole figure completely for them to yes. redo everything yeah. too they're just like you know what we're going to get something out to you. You still can be able to see it and you can still and play with it. You can still do what yeah. you want, you know, and then you'll get those parts and you'll be able to fix it up. And yeah, but there, in fact, they're also including that extra panther head with the glow in the dark eyes. Like he's been, uh, just saw the, the, the Bing. signal. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's really cool. Like it's yeah. like a little extra. And it, it just even makes me more want to just support the company. Yeah. Versus a lot of other companies. Yeah. That just don't give a damn. Well, yeah, because we we've had one where it was like, well, you didn't buy it directly from us, so you're SOL. Yeah. On on figuring. Or even out, just right? talking to it about it, which is yeah. like, oh, you didn't buy it directly from us, then. Yeah. We're not, and, even, and gonna, we're not just, even gonna touch it. And, that's just not right. Yeah. You, know? you know. And that was Mexico. If you, had, if you yeah exactly. I mean, if you had a receipt showing that you bought something new. For even from a third party, mm-hmm. I can understand if it was a used product. Yeah. Um, from something that I then I get that right, but yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. yeah. My Cyclops has a rip in the thing, and I all I asked was if they knew how to stop the rip in the spandex, and they asked, "Did you buy it from us?" I said, "No, I got it from my local shop," and they said, "That's nice. Have a good day." Like that's really shitty of them. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, but you, you you didn't ask for anything from. Them. No, I didn't you ask for a placement. For I was like, I was like, how do I make sure that it doesn't spread? So in tune, they get some bad talking. Yeah, you know, like because <laughs> if just... they're gonna be like that, then well, yeah, exactly. Super Seven seems like a company that you really want to help. Yeah, um, they're you know, smaller support. still, but they're still you know they're they're putting out something that's really cool. So that's why I like wait one TNT. So <laughs> <laughs> welcome to my life. It'll never end. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, but speaking, so speaking of, of thunder, okay. thunder, 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 cats. Oh. Katie did surprise us where she picked up the DVD. And yes, we know it's on Hulu, but we're in Canada. We do not have Hulu and it's not streaming in Canada. Yep. So. So what happened was. So your amazing wife. Amazing wife scored me the complete Thundercats uh, DVD set, uh, which is fantastic, and I'm super excited. And we already cracked into it as a family, and we started watching. Now, here's a funny story. So, a couple days ago, I showed Kiddo some episodes of because he's gotten into Transformers because the new Siege mm-hmm. on Netflix, and he just loves it. He thinks it's amazing. So, I showed him the original Transformer first episode, and he was just like. What is this? Why are we watching this? None of this makes sense. It's happening too quick, you know, because basically the first episode of Transformers is the entire season of Siege. Well, it's you, less than the entire season of Siege. And you were Siege. saying to that some of the transformations, they don't even make size, shape, size. Well, they shrink sense. and grow to what they need. Yeah. Like Optimus's trailer shows up and then disappears and then they can fly. And so he was just like, whoa. He's like, his logic like, brain is just yeah. totally not okay. He's like, he's like, I will not watch any more Transformers until the new stuff comes again. Like yeah. it, it, it bothered him that much. He loves the new cartoon. So I'm just going to go with that. I'm not going to, if he asked to watch it, whatever, but. And you know what? That's the whole point of the new cartoon is to find someone. New viewers, new right? New viewers, right? So it did its job. Right. And then, so then he's like asking about, was asking about um, G.I. Joe because of why, why I'm into him and all, why I've been like dying to get some of them and i was like well it's like i i remember more the toys and playing with the toys more than the cartoon so i was like well here i'll show you i'll show you gi joe so because two by has these right and so we have that app and so i put that on well i had asked him i was like so what do you think of gi joe <laughs> it was good and then you looked at him and you were like really that's really what you think <laughs> so when we watched that, he had said to me, if mom had just bought us Thundercats, I wouldn't have to be watching this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, this is like historic, right? You gotta, he's like, he's like, I'd rather be watching Thundercats. <laughs> and 
He's like, because that that show was weird. It was like Indiana Jones meets military guys. And (laughs) I don't want to watch any more of it. And I was like, but it gets better. Like, this is the first six episodes before the series revamped and became more of what was known. Right. Yeah. I was like, in the second episode, it's Snowdrop, like <laughs> the name itself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then, yeah, he, he. So then, then, yeah, you told me that afterwards and I'm like, oh, so that's how you really feel. <laughs> like, you could tell me it's OK. You don't have to love it. I'm not asking you. No, to, I wasn't. Yeah. Like, you know, but yeah, it was the um, so mom, you need to buy Thundercat so I don't have to watch G.I. Joe again. <laughs> <laughs> like it has now turned into. Like, if we feel like punishing him, we could put on G.I. Joe for him. Don't make us turn G.I. Joe on. <laughs> like, this is not what has happened. That's what I said. I said so he's sitting there like, Mom, please, please, can we buy Thundercats? And see, the thing that was weird is, like, it's like, I'm like, Thundercats is old, dude. Like, well, because I asked him later, I'm like, so what makes you think you're going to like Thundercats if you didn't like these ones? Didn't you say like they're cats? Or something? Yeah, I, I don't even remember. It was like, no, I, I, I'll i like it. I'll like it. And I think I know it's because, you know, with watching Roar, he has a, a more of an appreciation and a connection. And honestly, you know, he's never been someone who there's never been any sort of sense where I thought where G.I. Joe would have made sense because he's not military or battle or anything like yeah. that. But uh, so thankfully... I uh, saved the day and I saved him from the G.I. Joe and I have purchased the Thundercats you could eat for him. And he was that was one of the fastest hugs I have ever gotten. Like, I don't have to watch G.I. Joe anymore, Mom. (laughs) It was was so sad and so happy all at the same time. We watched uh, one episode. Remember, this is one episode. Like, uh, (laughs) it's just funny. Uh, So, yeah, now um, now our. All we watched was Thundercats. Today. Today. So. Yeah. So thunder, I have never. Thunder, thunder, Thundercats. I've never seen Thundercats at all. Like. That makes sense. It's yeah. 86. Yeah, exactly. So I had never seen anything at all. Um, I love Roar. And, you know, the the other stylings of them, honestly, probably would have been Robot Chicken. Or the only time I would have seen any yeah, toys or anything like that. Yeah, as a. Uh, or, um, you know, so. I, I really didn't know what to expect, but I was just like, okay, it's going to be an old cartoon. It's going to be corny. It's going to be like old He-Man. Okay, cool. You know, honestly, mind-blowingly surprised on how much I'm enjoying this cartoon. <laughs> I was like, damn, this is actually really good. <laughs> like, I am super impressed. Even the filler episodes. We've watched, what, eight episodes or so? Yeah. Even the filler episodes are pretty solid. Yeah, like I'm really enjoying the characters. The, you know, a decent amount of explanation for the situation that they're in. You know, it wasn't like, what the hell just happened? You know, there's a certain amount of just you're jumping with it, whatever. Yeah. But like right now, I don't need to know why their planet exploded. It just sucks. But it doesn't affect the story because now they're here. Yeah. And like the bad guys are really well developed, actually. Right. I was like Slice super and impressed. Even like, monkey in, and I'm and... not gonna lie. I'm like, well, of course you need to have all of them. I'm like, like <laughs> I'm watching this. I was like, of course you need to have them. They're not just side characters, right? right? Because in Roar, of course, they're just so much throwaway, right? Yeah. But in this one, they actually have a Conniving development for them, and, right? Yeah. And like, they're they're decent villains, and yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised on how much. And now this has turned into something that, luckily, it's the end of summer, and they don't have days the where they we'll be sitting there crying it about it so because it's going to be a family cartoon watch yep <laughs> that's uh, what happened <laughs> so yeah i was i'm thoroughly impressed kid is like on oh, it it's, it's ours now it's it's not not just your guys thing yeah so but i mean there's still some some pretty funny corny moments in it right? oh yeah um okay so i love that we found out that they were produced by rankin and bass mm-hmm. uh and which to me i only associate them with christmas stop motion movies only um and it was a year yeah without a santa right? claus so the more we're watching this we all of a sudden we're like oh my goodness there's the rankin and bass like yeah the trumpety like yeah sound. the the nervous sound <laughs> like it's the danger like something's wrong and something not is not it, necessarily danger but just something is afoot? happening something's afoot right? isn't it the same sound that's used too when like santa blows his nose santa also blows his nose yeah. like that yes. <laughs> 
like a trumpet. Yeah. Um, and it is it is the Christmas song. Like it is weird, like built like Pavlo dog thing into me. I'm like, this is a Christmas movie. And uh, so the the one episode had a lot of snarf talking. Snarf, snarf. Which, which we've decided snarf. he's also he reminds me of us of uh, the king from Owl House. Owl House. Yeah. Because he's like, I am wonderful and I am amazing, but then when time something happens, mm. I am. I'm a, baby. Ah, I'm a baby. I'm a baby, and you yeah. need to take care of me. Yeah, so like that's why I want to know if Dana. I like. I want to know if if the king is actually s- based on snark or like yeah, inspired by snark. Yeah. So I so the, the voice. Oh, I'm I'm listening to this, and I'm like, this sounds like Jingle Bell from the Year of That Santa Claus. And I was like, it has to be because I can hear the damn elf's yeah. voice in my head, and then you add the trumpet sound, and it was just like. <laughs> Oh, I mean, Snarf. this is my favorite Christmas movie ever. So Mike looks it up and it is. Yeah. It's like, yes, yeah, so Jingle Bell is. Bob fun. McFadden. Yeah. He voiced like 10 other things in that show, too. Oh, right? no doubt. Right. I mean, it, then it, back back then they would have their voice actors. Yeah. And they do so many different things. Right. And uh, yeah. So weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, hey, the music, too, like kiddo is just like dancing to it like he's just like 70s disco stuff too whenever panthro shows up it's like complete soul it's awesome (laughs) like panthro walks in he's like i am the man right like he has that (laughs) that 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 70s soul (laughs) funk right but But yeah i am i'm super impressed with it well kiddo is just singing bits and pieces of all the different types of all music. Different the danger music. music the theme song i have that stuck in my head and i've been listening to also total side note the new Katy perry album all all weekend so i have bits and pieces of thundercats and Katy perry in my head <laughs> it's a whole cat themed weekend for music you need to you need to try to figure out how to mix those two together like you need right? a soundboard and just yeah so but um, yeah no kiddo he's literally, literally he'll be walking down the stairs and he'll be humming something I'm like why are you singing the Thundercats danger music? Like, <laughs> and he's sitting there, like he's he sings the whole theme song every time it comes on. He's like dancing and mm-hmm. singing the whole thing, and he's just oh, he loves theme songs though. I mean, he loved the power, all the the, the the um, not the Power Rangers. No, oh, Power Rangers. Well, is... he loves Power Rangers, but the when when he had Zio, Zio was the one he sang the most. I know, but I'm thinking the original, the Japanese stuff. Sentai. Sentai, thank you. I suddenly, oh my god, this is not good. I forgot. But he loves the Sentai stuff, too. Uh, Speaking of which, we need to go back to and watch. Back to watch some sentai, some yeah. Of the Sentais. Yeah, so. But yeah, so, so but Thunder, you know, I've been watching it, and like, I still just love it. It's because it's weird. It's like, Star Wars meets furries meets, like... <laughs> He-Man. You know, the, 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 the lessons aren't as forced as He-Man, though. Yeah. Right? Well, they like, don't have a little recap of, like, like what did he, we learn today? He, yeah, right? He-Man would always end. It would be like, you know, he'd show up and I'm like, <laughs> it's always good to be nice to your friends. It's right? like Sesame Street. Yeah, right? <laughs> but this is, like, just, like, built into it. It shows, like, four years later, they're like, maybe we shouldn't just be saying it that way to Well, people. and you know what I'm pleasantly surprised about with... I, I can watch this and be like, oh, I remember when they did this in Roar. So they're <laughs> they're they're definitely taking the original source material and paying homage to it. They yeah. care about that and they're looking at it and it shows because so much of it is mirrored in it. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool to yeah. see. I can't wait to get go through all this and then then get the 2011 series mm-hmm. just to see where that is because I've only seen bits and pieces of that one. Yeah. So that'll be. But so far, what I've seen, I. I I'm one of the ones that I can actually say I have enjoyed something from everything I've seen yeah. from all three eras. Yeah. Right. So um, that, is, you know, is. Well, is, honestly, we, we can accept like more and you like in the old one. There's no reason why you wouldn't like 2011. Yeah. I know my sister, her, her husband's a big Thundercats fan, and she immediately said, you know, how much she enjoyed the 2011 one as well, yeah. so I'm looking forward to that, so. And yeah, it's, it's like Turtles. Though. There's something from all of them that yeah. I have been able to enjoy. Yeah. Right? Some I enjoy more than others, but, yeah. you know, so, for sure. And speaking of that, I haven't finished Rise, but um, 
the last couple episodes that I watched. We never watched of the yeah we never got the because we got Thundercats. We got Thundercats and everything else all the one. And I was like, like, well, we'll watch, we got two like two episodes of Rise left, and then done. You guys can watch the Turtles tomorrow, right? <laughs> but anyways, the last few episodes of Rise have been a game changer over the entirety that was season one. Well, it's the most positive you've talked about it from the yeah, beginning, right? Like, like, and when you're telling me about this, I was like, damn, that sounded like cool. I would have watched that. The last few, the last few episodes of rise, uh, the season two, like, cause it's, 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 it's finale. Cause yeah. they only got two seasons. Uh, if that show had been like that from the beginning, mm-hmm. that would have been, it would have been amazing yeah. with the different take on it. Right. But it had so much goofball weirdness that wasn't silly enough to be like Roar. Mm hmm. Um, that, that I think that's where it has problems. It wasn't as acceptable. Though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't, it was, it was too much of a change, but without being so goofy. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, totally worth watching the, like the finale of, uh, so you said it's four parts, right? It's four parts. Yeah. Uh, totally worth watching the few episodes before that and like start at Battle Nexus and watch through and like it, it's good turtle mythology. Nice. So That's if you cool. can still find that. So, um, yeah. Nice. Well, we actually did quite a bit. Yeah. New fun things. Well, we uh, we did watch one movie. We watched another movie. Okay. We watched the one with Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, yes. I was playing Sim, so I watched that, you know, in murder mayhem in the back. <laughs> uh, that guns. Akimbo, is it? Yeah. Uh, it was a good movie. It was definitely like it just crazy balls of all, you know. It's interesting, though, that as bloody and foul of a movie is, it's actually a movie that's preaching against that. It's like its message is hidden within its own filth. Yeah. Which is pretty wild to see and yeah. how well that's done. Um and uh, it reminded me very much of like Crank, mm-hmm. that, you know, Jason Statham movie where it's just that like that really bombastic style. Yeah. Right. It starts out really like doing trippy things with the camera and all that. But then it kind of like just gets a little bit more standard near the end, mm-hmm. which I thought was interesting. Um, the chick that was in it, uh, I don't remember what her name is, but she was in Ready or Not. And she yes. also was in Bill and Ted. Bill, she was the daughter. Yeah. She was a uh, Theodora. Okay. She was yes. Yeah. Um so okay. Bill, Bill's Bill's daughter. Yes. Getting them mixed yeah, up, know, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> so um just think she's blonde, so right? Like <laughs> so fit it that kind of falls in line with what we're talking about. Yeah. Um but I can see why, because I've seen before people t- said that she should be playing Harley. Yeah. And you could see that with this Well, movie. especially some of her faces that she had with the like, I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah. Like there one are explicit. Sorry, those are explicit. <laughs> um no, you can drop one F bomb and still get a 14A. We're good. Um so they were ish, that kind of those murder stairs that she yeah. had was like sometimes I would look up, I'm like, oh crap, she looks scary right there. Yeah. And uh yeah, I can see the and the like, laugh and the smile and yeah, all that, right? The the murderous Harley Quinn yeah. face was right there for sure. So But it was a fun, just you know, ridiculous watch and you know the the murder. Interesting mayhem. message of of you know, just assuming that just that entertainment of thing and then possibly not thinking how something is actually affecting someone's real life. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> exactly the message it was preaching. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I just thought was pretty wild that it was like, you know, preaching something and you might not think that it is, but it is. Yeah. Yep. So, so but definitely if you're looking for for murder mayhem and all that. You watch Harry Potter kill a bunch of people. You, you know, see. Why not? Harry Potter's <laughs> wang. Really? It wasn't a real one. Oh, I know. I was just saying, I don't remember this that. weird tube thing that came out where he was pissing all over. The oh place. yeah, <laughs> the tube. I I was just like trying not to look because it was gross scene. All right, uh, <laughs> but he gets guns strapped to his hands and he's got like a no, not strapped, bolted, bolted. to his hands. Bolted, bolted. So good luck figuring that one out. Right, like holy moly. But uh, that was that was a that was a fun one. That so. was a weird offshoot bombastic term to right yeah everything else <laughs> i'm in the mood we've watched so much standard stuff for a while because you're in your weird indie phase now well just the, the weirder like just I'm, it's falls coming i'm starting to feel the the call ah, the call for the halloweenish yeah and the stuff yes <laughs> the the horror movie call la, 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 la. <laughs> the moon is full <laughs> nice i must run with the wolves nice 
But uh, yeah, so go check out Bill and Ted's. And of course, check out Thundercats. Of course. Because <laughs> damn. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Oh! <laughs> I have to just add that to it anytime. It's <laughs> just thundercats, thundercats, thundercats. Ho! <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, that's. I'm super excited. So about. if you have Hulu and you're you have golden, no excuse to not watch the awesomeness. <laughs> Right. And if you're in the States, you can get Hulu for, you know, for however long, you know what? Um, and watch Thundercats in in Roar. It, you know, he always said he well, he wasn't saying it right to begin with. Right. That's why he wasn't getting struck by lightning. But um, it's it's more just Mumra. It's so like blended together. But I like in in the Thundercats when he when he says it, it's Mumra. Yeah. You know, it's so much more epic and it, it sounds more correct with the egyptian type thing, yeah. right but it's you know mom raw i'm like yeah i'm super excited about that it's just something little but it's still awesome so, oh yeah i love the like his skeleton. his whole he's temple like and everything is he's so fantastic. much eviler than skeletor he's terrifying right yeah i know i was watching this he's was more like, evil as scary. the mummy than he is as ever living though yeah when he's ever living he's a bit of a dolt yeah, he's like, Ha-ha. I love how he's always like, <laughs> he's just doing it. He's like Skeletor then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when he's the actual. Power just, corrupts. It does. Goes to his brain. He doesn't have enough brain power to, to run both. everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then you realize God only gave you enough blood <laughs> to, run to run one, one at head a time. At a time. <laughs> Okay, well, um, we're going on a tangent, so we should probably go. We we should probably leave, yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> next week, who knows what we're coming at you with? Because we're going camping. We're going camping, so most likely it'll be more Thundercats. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> or something. The, no, Mulan. Mulan hits Disney Plus really on the fourth. Oh yeah, because it'll be Labor Day yeah. and uh, the Labor actual weekend. end of summer. Yeah. You know, so maybe we'll check out Mulan. Yeah, that'll be exciting. So maybe we'll have another new movie. Oh my goodness! Or oh, weird, so. right? It's been <gasps> Radnesia for forever since May. I know. Uh, <laughs> April, actually, May, March. I don't have any Sailor Moon stuff, so it'll be a Thundercats and Mulan. No, and we have we have cat movies to watch, Mike. I don't know where we're gonna fit in. We, you know, no, not, I don't know how. It's we're not the butthole anything. edition, so I don't think anyone cares. <laughs> So, well, everyone, stay rad, dudes. Thanks for joining us and have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening. Want more rad content? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. And remember, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.